understand who believes it. If you just drive to any grocery store, when, someone, when the weatherman has said there's a winter storm warning coming, you just go to the grocery store and try to find a parking spot. You don't have to go in. And you'll see there's a lot of people who believe the weatherman. But, you know, a preacher gets up and preaches, Jesus is coming, and people do nothing to prepare. 2 Samuel 3, verse 33. And the king lamented over Abner and said, Died Abner as a fool dieth? And, king, and the king lamented over Abner and said, Died Abner as a fool dieth? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for the opportunity to be here. We thank you, Lord, that we can open your word. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that questions are answered in your word. We pray, Lord, this morning for those on the prayer list. We pray, Lord, that you'll be with each and every need. We pray, Lord, for the Chow family. We pray, Lord, for those who are suffering. We pray, Lord, for those in faraway places, missionaries, and uh, the missionaries that we support and the missionaries we don't even know about. And, Lord, missionaries who feel forgotten. We pray, Lord, for them this morning. We pray, Lord, that you'll be with those who are doing your work. We pray, Lord, that you'll encourage them and bless them. And help us this morning as we open your word, Lord, that you'll speak to us. And, Lord, that you'll compel us, Lord, to do as your word speaks to us. We pray, Lord, that you'll bless the service this morning. We always invite thy Holy Spirit to be in the message, in our worship, and in everything. Lord, for we know without the Spirit, everything is in vain. We pray, Lord, that you'll bless us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The title of the message this morning is A Fool's Death. A Fool's Death. I looked up the word fool in an online dictionary, and it just said simply, it's a naive person someone who lacks good judgment, a person who acts unwisely. King David, in 2 Samuel 3, verse 33, asked the question, and the king lamented over Abner and said, Died Abner as a fool dieth? Question mark. David, King David, asked the question, As a fool dieth? King Solomon, in Ecclesiastes, when I first read Ecclesiastes, I thought, what is this chapter? You know, when I was first saved, I was reading through the Bible, and I got to Ecclesiastes, and I'm like, what is this book doing in the Bible? I know the Bible's inspired. I know all the Bible is good, but what is Ecclesiastes? What is this? And it took, it took a while, and I read through the book, and, I, and, I, and I, the first time I read it, I didn't understand it because I was reading it from the wrong mindset. But the book of Ecclesiastes is everything under the sun, through the physical eyes of this life. And he says, everything's vanity. Everything's vanity. And Ecclesiastes says, Solomon says, one of the wisest man to ever live, but he's looking through the eyes of the physical. He says, how dieth the wise man? Question mark as the fool. You know, whether you're rich or poor in this life, you may die the same death. You know, there, cancer, cancer doesn't care who you are. There are diseases that don't care who you are. You can be the most, most popular sports entertainer in the world, or you might be the most popular sports player in the world, and you may die the same death as someone who is a murderer in prison. Death has no distinction about who or what you are. And when King Solomon looked through his physical eyes, he says, And how dieth the wise man as the fool? How dieth the wise man as a fool, as the fool? The question this morning is, how does a fool die? How does a fool die? We don't think about that, but here's the question raised by King David. John Allen Chow, 27 years of age. I don't know if you've heard the story. I was at home, in a, and I got a text message from a man at work who's unsaved, who I've witnessed to, and he sent me this text message. And it was a, a link to the, the news report about John Allen Chow. And I don't know how many of you have heard this or not. John Allen Chow, 27 years of age, was a missionary to one of the most remote, unreached tribes in the world. It is reported that he was brutally and killed at the hands that he actually sought to reach with the gospel. King David asked the question, died Abner as a fool dieth? Question mark. If you were to ask the world about the death of John Allen Chow, many would say that he was a fool. The world's definition of fool is simply someone who lacks good judgment. If you went to them and said, John Allen Chow, did he show good judgment in what he was doing? They would have said the dictionary definition of a fool is actually what he did. He lacked good judgment and he went to a place where they were hostile and they were known to shoot arrows at strangers. And he, 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 he just went in there and died as a fool. I watched a short video titled Visiting North Sentinel, an island untouched for 55,000 years. 
It has 3.9 million views on YouTube. And many of the new comments are about the tribe and death of John Chow. I couldn't ask the world, what is your perspective on this? But I went to a video knowing that the world was looking at this video because of what had happened. And I wanted to see what the comments were. People are very harsh, especially the cowards behind the computer screen of anonymity. And this is just a side note. Listen, when you're online and no one knows who you are, don't say something you wouldn't say in person to a person. Amen? We need to be very careful about what we post online. We need to be very careful about what we say, period. As people, you know, this morning, the whole devotion was about the tongue. And the tongue can no man tame. And we need to be very careful as Christians to think out our thoughts before we put them out there. But people get behind a computer screen of anonymity and they just type out all kinds of horrible, harsh things. But I wanted to hear what the, the world was saying about what had happened. Here are a few comments. Number one, a few days ago, a Christian illegally went there for a missionary purpose and was killed by the sentinels. When will people learn to leave them alone? Two, don't interfere. These were, these were some of the very first comments. Two, don't interfere with them. They're happy in their small world in life. Number three, exactly what has religion ever done to the outside world rather than hate? Western people always think they know better and that everyone in this world must be like them. For, for once, they should think twice because why go very far and convert people when your own neighborhood and surrounding surroundings are, live, are living the opposite way of life? People should respect other people's culture and way of life. I don't feel sorry for those that were killed, especially John Chow. He thought he was a hero. Number four, I'm happy 99%, 9% of the people in this comment section agree we should leave them alone. Number five, too bad Jesus couldn't protect this guy to spread his message. If asked the question, did John Chow, did John Allen Chow die as a fool dieth, their answer would be yes, because a fool in their mind is a naive person, someone who lacks good judgment, a person who acts unwisely. Yet we as Christians, yet we as Christians, those of us who follow Jesus would affirm that his death was not in vain and that John Allen Chow did not die as the death of a fool. As we who read our Bibles understand his labor was not in vain in the Lord. And that the pres and that precious that precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Amen? We, under, we know that the unsaved, we know what the unsaved world does not understand. When they say, too bad Jesus couldn't protect this guy to spread his message. Think about that. Because that's, the world, that's what the world sees. They haven't read about Stephen, have they? They haven't read about Stephen, who was full of the Holy Ghost and of faith and of power, Yet at a young age, he was stoned to death. You know, think about Stephen who went to a people who did not want to hear his message. And he went in such love that he went in knowing that possibly it could cost him his life. And he preached a gospel full of the Holy Spirit and was stoned to death and lay there bleeding and dying. But he looked up. And what those who could not see and maybe commented harshly as they gnashed on him with their teeth, whether physically or, or just with their words, they couldn't see Stephen looking up and seeing Jesus at the right hand standing and waiting for him. What the world doesn't see. I could just hear the voices of those around saying, don't interfere with them, they're happy in their small little life. I'm happy that 99% of the people on this comment section agree we should just leave them alone. Too bad Jesus couldn't protect this guy to spread his message. Uh, not understanding when Stephen, you know, Stephen didn't want to die. Think about that. Stephen was a real man. This is history. Stephen was a young man. He was young, and you look at his life, and you're like, why did God allow this to happen? Why did God allow this to happen? He's so full of the Holy Spirit. Think of how many people he could reach. But Stephen understood, listen, I give my life to God. He knows what's best. I trust God. And even as they were stoning him to death, he looked up. And just like Jesus, he was forgiving the very people who were stoning him to death, hoping to see them sometime in the future in heaven. And the world that mocks, the world mocks and says, too bad Jesus couldn't protect this guy to spread his message did not understood, did not, do not understand 
that as Stephen was being stoned to death, a young man consenting to his death named Saul, a seed was planted in that heart of stone that grew up, and Paul, Saul, became Paul. And, and, and God knows how to spread his message. Amen? Amen? And as Stephen was in heaven, think about this. Stephen was in heaven. He went directly to heaven. He was standing, Jesus was standing waiting for him. And as, as Stephen was in heaven looking down at those who stoned him, and he'd been praying for them and preaching to them, he saw a young man named Saul with a little inquisitive look on his face, and it took some time. And can you imagine as Stephen was looking in heaven at Saul and seeing the things that were happening to Saul, and then Jesus appeared to him at his light, and Saul became converted, and God says, your name is no longer Saul, but it's Paul. And because Stephen was willing to lay down his life, he won more in his life than most of us will ever. He won more in his death than most of us will ever win in our life. He may have thought like John Allen Chow, who in a 13-page letter he gave to fishermen before he, he left on his journey, in which he detailed those failures. He detailed the failures to win over the islanders. He pleaded with God for clarity. He said, I don't want to die. Who will take my place if I do? And I pray that God will raise up a Saul who will turn into a Paul, who will go and win multitudes and multitudes and multitudes to Christ. And that he could accomplish more in his death than most of us will ever accomplish in our lives. So when the world mocks a Christian, they don't understand. We as Christians know the history. The death of Stephen was not in vain. There was another young man who consented to his killing who was able to go and spread the gospel to all the world. Probably the most missionary person. If you said, who's the greatest missionary of all times, most of us would think Paul. Because of Stephen. It was because of Stephen. One of the mockers said, I don't feel as sorry for those who were killed, especially John Chow. He thought he was a hero. The greatest, the greatest lifeguard of all time. The greatest lifeguard of all time was Jesus Christ, who, who was in heaven. He's God. Looked down at man and said, something has to be done. And he came at the risk of... And knowing that he would give up his life, he came down from heaven, lived a sinless, perfect life, and knew that he would not see his birthday on, 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 to be 34 years old. And understood that his life was worth giving to save others' lives. He thought, John Chow thought he was a hero. No, John Chow was a hero. A lifeguard who would swim out to rescue someone placing their own life in jeopardy is no fool. He is a hero. Someone who is willing to put their life on the line to save others is no fool. They are a hero. John Allen Chow is a hero. The first time John made contact with the tribe, he tried to hand over fish and a bundle of gifts. And the boy, the boy that was coming toward him took his arrows and he shot an arrow and it hit John Chow's Bible and John Chow said that the, the, Bible act, the, the arrow actually pierced through, through the Bible, and as it broke off, he felt the sharpness of it and how thin it was and how sharp it was. And he cried out to the young boy. He says, my name is John. I love you, and Jesus loves you. Then he got onto his kayak, and he paddled for his life. Over the next couple days, Mr. Chow paddled back and forth between his kayak and the fishing boat that had brought him there, unsure what to do. The fisherman said that he had told them to give this letter to a friend in case he did not come back. In one of the passages, he asked God if the North Sentinels was Satan's last stronghold. In another, what makes them become this defensive and hostile? You know, what is it? What is it that makes these people want to kill me? You know, I read these comments, and I'm like, just leave them alone. They're happy in their little village. No, they're not happy. No one's happy in sin. You know, this is, this is what happens to man when God is taken out of the equation. They become barbaric. You know, we've all, we've all heard Sister Stringer, who went and was successful. You know, because the same thing could have happened to her. This young man who is an unsaved man who I've been witnessing to sent me this, sent me this link, and I read this, and I talked to him about it, and he'd heard about Sister Stringer, and he, he watched some of her video and everything, and, and he's like, wow, this could have happened to her, but it didn't, you know, maybe because she's a woman. And I said, I don't know, but in God's providence, in God's providence, she was spared, and the whole tribe was saved. I said, how great that is. But here John's like, what, what makes these people so barbaric? And he understood it was because they had not heard the love of Jesus Christ. 
But the world looks at it and says they're happy in their little village. Yet we hear about Sister Stringer who went to this other tribe, and when a twin was born, they'd kill one of them. We heard about they would kill someone, they would, they would cook them and eat them. They're not happy in their little village. There's nothing happy about that. They need Jesus Christ. John Chow, in his diary, said, or in his letter, he says, weird. Actually, no, it's natural. I'm scared. Young people, courage, courage is doing the right thing even when you're scared for your life. John Chow was afraid, as anyone would be. Stephen, I believe, was probably afraid when they started to throw the stones at him, but he understands courage is doing what is right even when things are going wrong. It's weird. Actually, no, it's natural. I'm scared, John wrote. There I said it. Also frustrated and uncertain. Is it worth me going afoot to meet them? He added, I don't want to die. Still he went. That's courage. That's what a hero does. We re- you know, this morning we read about one of the heroes of World War I, who had at the risk of his own life, after a plane went into the ocean, or into wherever body of water it was, he jumped out into it with, with the risk of his own life to go after those, and he saved a man. Not sure if he would accomplish this goal, but he was willing to risk his life to go and try to save someone. On the afternoon of November 16th, that was just eight short days ago, the fishermen who were interviewed told police Mr. Chow reassured them that he would be fine, staying on the island overnight, and that the fishermen could go. They motored out, leaving Mr. Chow alone for the first time. When they passed by the island the next morning, they saw islanders dragging his body by a rope. No one knows exactly what happened, but it doesn't, it, we don't have to wonder too much. He was probably shot with arrows and, and died, and they were dragging his body off to do whatever they were going to do with it. Before setting off that final day, Mr. Chow finished a note with a message to his family. This isn't the whole note, but I want to read you part of it. Brian and Mary and Mom and Dad. You guys might think I'm crazy in all of this, but I think it's worth it to declare Jesus to these people. Please do not be angry at them or at God if I get killed. Rather, please live your lives in obedience to whether he has called you to and to whether he has called you to, and I'll see you again when you pass through the veil. This is not a pointless thing. The eternal lives of this tribe is at hand, and I can't wait to see them around the throne of God, worshiping in their own language as Revelation 7, 9 through 10 states. I love you all, and I pray none of you love anything in this world more than Jesus Christ. John Chow. John Chow showed us what true faith is. Amen? John Chow, John Allen Chow is a hero. He showed us what true faith is. We, we talk of faith. We talk of belief. We talk about the Bible. John was willing to place his life in God's hands. Say, do with it what you want. I know I'm going to a dangerous place. I know I could die. I'm writing a letter in preparation in case I do that my loved ones will know that my death is not in vain and that I did this for love of God, for love of Jesus Christ, and for love for my neighbor. The world would call that foolish and say, where was God when John needed him? That's what they'll ask. That's what they ask of Christians. When Christians get hurt, when Christians die, they ask the question, where was God when John needed him? And John would respond to them, and I'm confident in this. This is his own words. This is not a pointless thing. The eternal lives of this tribe is at hand, and I can't wait to see them around the throne of God, worshiping in their own language, as Revelation 7, 9, and 10 states. Revelation 7, 9, and 10 says, After this I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cry with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and to the Lamb. Amen? It was the Moravians. The Moravians, if you read the story, who heard about a slave island where no Christians were ever allowed to go, because everywhere Christians went, they told the gospel, and the gospel it frees people. And the slave owners never, ever, ever wanted their slaves to be free. And they had an island, and they had slaves on it. They said, no Christian will ever step foot on this island. 
Some Moravian young men said, we must go. And they sold themselves into slavery. And they were on the boat departing, calling out to their loved ones, saying, Worthy is the lamb of the sacrifice he shall receive. As they sold themselves into slavery, never to see their families again, knowing that their life was on the line and they would never ever in this life see their family, they said, Worthy is the lamb of the sacrifice. This just happened. John died eight short days ago, and we do not know the conclusion of what will happen. We know about Jim Elliot. If you were in Sunday school class, Sister Tabitha brought up Jim Elliot. We know this very thing happened to Jim Elliot, and we do know the history of Jim Elliot, that his death was not in vain in the Lord, that even though he died at a very young age, his death saved more lives than most of us if we lived to be a thousand. We do know the conclusion of Stephen. Though he died at a very young age, his death, because of his death, who knows how many thousands or millions have been saved. And we know Jesus Christ who came in the flesh and gave up his life. And because of that, all who are saved have come through him. I told the man in my work when he told me the first time about this, I said, listen, we don't know the conclusion of this matter. But let me tell you about Jim Elliot, a young man who is willing to give everything, knowing that he couldn't keep his physical life anyway, to go and reach a tribe who maybe didn't want to hear the message, and they brutally killed him. But later, his widow and some other missionaries went back and won the whole tribe to Christ. Because of that, countless souls will be in heaven for all eternity. John's family gave a statement. We recently learned from an unconfirmed report that John Allen Chow was reported killed in India while reaching out to a member of the Sentinel tribe in the Adaman Islands. Words cannot express the sadness we have experienced about this report. He was a beloved son, brother, uncle, and best friend to us. To others, he was a Christian missionary, a wilderness EMT, an international soccer coach, and a mountaineer. He loved God, life, helping those in need, and had nothing but love for the Sentinelist people. We forgive those we forgive those reportedly responsible for his death. We also ask for the release of those friends he had in the Adaman Islands. He ventured out on his own free will, and his local contacts need not be persecuted for his own actions. As a family, we ask for your understanding and respect for him and us during this time. Thank you, the Chow family. Paul was a missionary and a minister and in. 2 Timothy 4, verses 1 through 5. I'll read that real quick. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. But watch thou in all things... Endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Here Paul was, was speaking to a young man, and he was saying, listen, listen, make full proof of your ministry, because I charge you before God and Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead, that we all will stand before God to give account for what we've done in our life, whether it is good or whether it is bad. When you become a Christian, listen, listen, there are people and there's a time coming that we must preach the word and we must be instant in season, out of season. We must reprove, we must rebuke, we must exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. We must care for those who don't care for themselves because there will be time when, when people will, well, they won't endure sound doctrine. It will be dangerous times. You know, for America, I believe there are probably in the future dangerous times coming for American Christians who are true Christians. And we must have our mind made up that we will make full proof of our ministry, even a witness unto death if need be. And Paul was a missionary exhorting Timothy to make full proof of his ministry. The world's definition of a fool is a naive person, someone who lacks good judgment, a person who acts unwisely, God's definition is a little different. 
God's definition of a fool is Psalms 14.1. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. Listen, a fool is someone who says in his heart there is no God. It is someone who lives their life as if there is no God. They've not only said in their heart there is no God, their heart shows what they are, and they live their life as if there is no God. They do abominable works. They live a wicked life. A fool denies God in his heart and therefore denies him with his life. God's definition of a fool. The dictionary gives a partial definition. Because someone who is unwise, someone who, is, who lacks good judgment, doesn't read the Bible, makes no preparation for eternity. Let me ask the question, did John Allen Crow, did John Allen Chow, and I believe I'm pronouncing this, if I'm pronouncing this, pronouncing this name wrong, I apologize, but I believe it is John Allen Chow. Did John Allen Chow die as a fool dieth? Jim Elliott, who suffered the same death and wrote before he died, said this, and this is one of the greatest quotes you'll ever hear. He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Amen? John Allen Chow knew the, the definition of a fool. And he said, he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. There's an old story, and I'll close. I'm going to close with this story. It's an old story. We've all heard it pastor told this story one time when I was probably younger, and I still remember it to this day, about an old king and his clown or his gesture, who sometimes said very foolish things. And the court gesture came before the king one day, and he said something so foolish that the king was astounded. He said, that's the most ignorant, most foolish thing I've ever heard in my whole entire life. He says, here, I want to give you something as a token of your foolishness. And he took his scepter. And he gave it to the gesture, and he said, here, I want you to keep this, and I want you to search. And if you ever find anybody more foolish than yourself, I want you to give them this scepter as a token of their foolishness. Some years later, the king lay on his deathbed, and he called in the courtiers, all the courtiers, his family, his servants. They all stood around his bedside, and the king addressed them and said, I'm about to leave you. I'm going on a very long journey and I will not be returning again to this place. So I've called you all in to say goodbye. And one by one, his family members went to his bedside. He would say he loved them. He would tell them goodbye. He would say he loved them and tell them goodbye. Then it came to his courtiers, and the gesture finally came up. And his gesture stepped forward and addressed the king and said, Your Majesty, may I ask you a question? The king said, Okay. He said, when you have journeyed abroad, you've gone many places for your kingdom, and you've journeyed abroad visiting your people and paying diplomatic visits to other courts and other countries, and every time you went, you made preparation. You asked your people to make preparation for you, to make your preparations and your, your accommodations and make sure everything was ready for your journey. He said, O oh, king, what have you done to make preparation for this, the greatest journey of your life? And there was silence in the room. The king thought for a moment. He looked up at the gesture. He said, I've made no preparations. The gesture who was holding that scepter for years and years and never found anyone more foolish than himself handed it back to the king. He said, I finally found someone more foolish than myself. And he handed him the, the scepter. The question raised this morning is, how does the fool die? How does the fool die? He dies unprepared for eternity. Jim Elliot said, He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. No Christian, listen to me, no Christian ever dies the death of a fool. But every lost person dies the fool's death. A Christian dies a temporary life. Listen to this. A Christian dies a temporary life to live eternally. The lost live a temporary life to die eternally. It is the old story of the rich man and Lazarus. The rich man got all the things he could ever want in life. He ate the best food. He went to the best places. He had the nicest clothes. He had the mansion. He had everything in life, but he made no preparation for eternity. And he lay on his deathbed. 
If someone would have said, what preparation have you made for this long journey? Eternity, it never ends. He would have said, I've made no preparations. And in hell, he looked up at the beggar, who was now the rich man, and he said, oh, go tell my brothers. Go tell my family. Go tell everyone I died the death of a fool. I lived for temporary life and gave up eternal life. When you die and the question is asked, died, fill in your name, as a fool dieth, question mark, what will the answer be? I hope, I hope that you can say, I didn't die a fool. I made preparation for all eternity. As John Chow said, I love you all, and I pray none of you love anything in this world more than Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, that no Christian ever dies the death of a fool. We thank you, Lord, for those who have gone before us who have made full proof of their ministry. We thank you, Lord, for the pastor of this church, Pastor Noyes, who, who made full proof of his ministry. We thank you, Lord, for Stephen, who made full proof of his ministry. We thank you, Lord, for uh, John Allen Chow, who made full proof of his ministry. And we pray, Lord, that many, many, many souls will come to know you and that the gospel will be spread far and wide because that in his death he may win more than uh, most of us will ever win in our life. Father, I just pray, Lord, that you'll touch the hearts of those who are here. Lord, that none of us would live as the king lived and lay on our deathbed unprepared for the journey of eternity. And we know that there's only one way, there's only one truth, and there's only one life. There's only one way to be prepared, and that is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, if there's anyone here that's not saved, we pray that they'll be saved. We pray, Lord, for John Chow's family, if any of them are not saved. We pray, Lord, for any of his friends, any of his acquaintances, anyone who ever know him, that their memory of him and his holy life would be stirred in their minds and that they would be saved. We pray, Lord, and we know that his life was not in vain and that he died the death of a hero. And we pray, Lord, that you'll bless him and bless his family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ask for a song of invitation.